signs for deliverance ministry. And so Jesus, when he appointed them, he sent them out in twos, right? We like our teams to be three. And you utilize and you access the gifts that you have. You do. And a lot of times people will not step out and start deliverance until, you know, they feel like they're perfected. Well, then you're not going to ever get started. Okay. And so you do not minister alone. If we're just going to walk down here and I'll just interject as I read it. But you do not minister alone. A team of two or three people is best. All right. So one team member should be in charge of the session. That means basically they're leading the flow of the spirit. One person. If you have three people trying to call out different spirits, you're going to have a bunch of confusion and it's not going to be effective. All right. And so it's going to take longer to deal with that person's strongholds and all of that. It's going to be difficult to get anywhere. And so you always have a team leader. Even though you're working as a team, you have a team leader. And so if the leader gets tired, and it does happen if you're in a lengthy session, it's okay and it, and for the leader to, to rest and pull back and allow another team member to go in after that spirit. But you do have a flow. Now, we didn't talk a lot about mapping this time, but I'm going to interject that right here. We do what we call uh, spiritual mapping, and that's in your foundation book, and, and it's very important. And it's like pre-counseling. Pre-counseling before you go in to minister to somebody. We understand that you don't always have that option. You know, you're in a service and you got a strong manifestation. There, is, there usually is not no time for pre-counseling. You, you know, you have the Holy Spirit. But when you're talking about building a deliverance ministry, the mapping is very important. And so the mapping is dealing with their uh, generational inheritances, their bloodline iniquities, their strongholds, the things that they're battling and all of that. And that's in your all your books. So you can read that on your own time. And you do need to visit that. But mapping is very important. So when we have a team, we have our mapping sheets with us in the session. And so we can we can glance over and look at those sheets and those things that we have discovered through counseling. We have discovered um, through the areas of their struggles. OK, we know why they have a man hating spirit. Come on. And so you might not remember that if you're going into a session. And yes, we do use the Holy Spirit, but, you know, he has to work with us. And we may forget the reason why they have this deep root of bitterness. And so if we can glance over and see that they were maybe raped by an uncle, I'm just throwing that out there. Well, no, that's why they hate men. And so, you know, you have to deal with the soul ties. You're going to have to deal um, with the uncle and all of those things. And so that's why I'm talking about mapping, having all of these things on the paper that you discovered, your mapper discovered, just like you have mentors. You have a mentor team. You're going to have a mapping team. Okay. Okay. And those are those that you can trust. Those are those that like to gather information, but they're not, you know, they're, they're confidential. And you will many times because of the work, uh, you know, our, our house, we usually have a mapper in the session with us. So we, we cross train. When Jesus said the labors are few, he wasn't kidding. And so we, we cross <laughs> train here. <laughs> and so right now that's how you got to do it. You got to use what you have. Amen. You use what you have. And so anyway, they're usually in there. And so if the leader gets tired, he should appoint another member of the team to take over. Be sure your own spiritual life is in order. Do not attempt deliverance on someone else if there are demonic footholds in your own life. And so fasting is an excellent way to prepare. You know, when you're going into a session, do deliverance and you're angry at your spouse. You better get it together because nothing's going to happen. You know, or you're going to have so much backlash. Someone had asked about backlash on a question. Backlash comes back to me. If I have an open door, I have something in common with the spirit I'm trying to evict. And Jesus said in John... John, I think it's 1430. Let's find it here because that was a very good question someone had asked. Explain that. And so this is a good place to interject that.
because you if you have something in common, right, it's going to come back and find you after you cast that devil out. John 14, 30, Jesus says, I will not speak much more with you for the ruler of the world is coming and he has nothing in me. So that's a powerful statement, isn't it? So that means I can stand in confidence and go in after a spirit of bitterness because I don't have bitterness in my heart. So God can use you in your authority and you understand your authority and you have an anointing and all of that. God will use you. And he does. He flows through us and you can cast out that spirit of bitterness. But then if you didn't deal with that before the session, you're going to be dealt with afterwards by the enemy because he's going to be very upset with you and angry and, and you're going to be stirred up in your soul. OK, that's why you get yourself in order. And that's why we always we don't let people uh, minister on a deliverance team until they have been through cleansing themselves. They need to understand the process, right? So that's something you can do with your, uh, with your team. So be sure the person receiving ministry really wants deliverance. Also, they must be willing to make lifestyle changes necessary to maintain freedom. In some cases, it may be wise to ask them a sign of re sign a release form that uh, uh, absolves you from any legal ramifications. It's so true. We do that. We have consent forms. And you say, well, that that's, you know, but today, the day we live in, yeah, consent form. And we do that. And that also gives them a piece that because a part of that is that you are going to keep their business private. And so it's really it's integrity. Okay, it's just proving to them that you have some integrity and you're not out to hurt them anymore. You're trying to help them. Right. And so um, don't look for bizarre manifestations as evidence of deliverance. And we're going to go there in a little bit. Some people are out for the show or the power of a deliverance. That's pride. Even when Jesus was casting out demons, he did it as quick as he could. Even sometimes he had to say it more than once, even Jesus. But he did it as quick as he could because people were coming to watch. And he didn't like that, obviously. Or he could have, you know, like they do today. Hey, come watch this manifestation. There's a big show going on up front. Let's put it on camera and put them on social media. They're going to answer for that. That's not the way of the kingdom. That puffs up a man or a woman. Puffs you up. It will catch you. The devil may build you up and you may be able to have a big, large following and have this great whatever. But I'm here to tell you, it's going to bite you in the end. And so that's why we don't do that. We we keep it as uh, quick as we can. Use your authority. Get that out. We don't make a big deal about that because, I mean, how would that person feel later when they see themselves on social media looking and acting like that? How humiliating is that? I don't know how they get away with that unless people are consigning consent when they walk in that they won't sue them. I don't know. Because, you know, the anointing is what stirs up the demons. You know, it's not the person, the deliverance minister. It's the anointing and the power of God on their life. And so you can't, you got to get that out the way. It's not you. It's what you carry. Okay, which is Jesus. And so anyway, that's not the model that, that we do in cleansing. Amen. We don't, we don't want to do that. I wouldn't want, you know, people to see me acting like that. You know, who would, right? So even when we do mass, we keep it as quick as we can. And we keep, we let everybody know that you're all in the same field here. You know, we all have issues and that's why we're transparent as leaders. And we say, look, we go through deliverance too. So the people feel comfortable that the leaders got delivered too. You know, they had to sit in a chair. You know, they had to do it, and they still have to sit in the chair. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And so don't look for those manifestations. You'll be distracted. I'm telling you, no matter what you see, you stay focused on getting them free. Don't say or do anything that doesn't line up with the word of God. All right. Listen to the Holy Spirit's directive and ask him to show you how to pray. Sometimes there's a block 
or people are locked up. And so you have, you don't have to keep hammering that if nothing's happening, you need to pull back and just pray in the spirit a little bit. You know, you, the Holy Spirit's not leaving. Okay. You're not going to miss an opportunity. You can take your time. You know, you can, you can look it to your team. Like we do. We look to one another. You seen anything, you hearing anything? What do you, you know, it's all right. And the person is just waiting because they don't know either. They don't know why things aren't moving. So sometimes things are stubborn. Sometimes there's blocks or there's hindrances. There's curses in place that need to be broken. Soul ties that need to be dealt with. That's keeping the person in bondage. You listen to the Holy Spirit. We always say that he will speak to you. He will say things to you that you did not think about. You know, it's him when he's you're in a session. The anointing is present and he's talking. So if you're hearing things in a session, don't just, you, that's not a time to reason. <laughs> that's a time to go with it. Even if it's bizarre, even if it's something that you have never heard before, many times he'll give me a word or give the team something. And they're like, I don't know what it's being, but I, this is what I hear. They don't, I don't tell them not to say that anymore. I don't know. It doesn't matter if you know or not, what are you hearing? Right? Because when you release that and you speak that in prayer and you say it, something breaks. All right, because the Holy Spirit knows what's holding them up. And so be courteous. Hmm. Be considerate, not to the demons, but to the person. Don't be nice to demons, but to the person, be nice. <laughs> you know, be, be respectful to them. Because if a demon takes a person over, they don't, they don't even know. When, if a spirit comes up and a person's in a full-blown manifestation, many, many times they don't remember what they did. And so when that's over, you don't say, hey, man, you should have, I, I should have videoed this thing. Come on now. That's funny. But people do those things, you know. You, you, you should have seen what you did. That devil is a liar. You don't do that. That's not being respectful to what the person. That's why those sessions are what? Confidential. We only discuss sessions as a team for educational or for understanding and to make sure that, you know, we have, we, we know what happened. You know, and sometimes you do got to discuss those sessions because you might have had a team member that was a little out of order. You know, if you don't tell them they're out of order, they ain't going to know. And you tell them even respectfully because you need team. <laughs> right. And so it's all about treating other people as you would want to be treated. It goes back to that, doesn't it? The simplicity. You just treat other people the way you want to be treated. So you comfort the person if he's afraid. Don't humiliate them or abuse them by re restraining them unnecessarily. Notice I said unnecessarily because there are times you must restrain people so they don't hurt themselves, right? And there's a proper way of restraining, and we may show you that later, but there is a proper way that people don't get bruised up. We've had that in early years. God doesn't forgave us, but we've seen a lot of things through the years in deliverance, and so... You can hold people too tight, you know, and put bruises on their arms, you know. So there's a way to do things that keeps people safe because there are times that you will see those kind of manifestations, you know, and especially certain uh, cultures or regions where people live, where there's stronger, you know, principalities ruling in certain uh, natures of certain demons, occult spirits, witchcraft spirits. A lot of those are very, uh, very strong and they will manifest demonic strength, but you still have authority, and the greater one is stronger. Hallelujah, right? So you exercise your authority in those, in those times, but you be mindful of the people. And so if demons manifest, do, you do not need to shove the person, punch them in the stomach, <laughs> scream in his face right past the Kenneth, <laughs> or pour oil all over them. <laughs> <laughs> he wants that Smith anointing. Treat them with respect. At times, one may need to be held down in an appropriate manner, face down, as not to allow the flinging of the arms so they don't hurt themselves. We do that. They go face down because you don't want them on their back. They could choke, and then their arms are free. And that's not good because they're going to punch you. And so you put them face down 
And we have been hurt sometimes. I'm just going to say we have been hurt sometimes. I've had a lot of a lot of things happen to me in deliverance through the years. Bruises, a lot of bruises. I had a, and we know now we don't wear <laughs> earrings. I had an earring ripped out of my ear. Oh yeah. Death threats. People saying I'm going to kill you. All kinds of things like that. And they come at you to kill you. They always go after the leader. Okay, they they'll <clears throat> they'll rise up and try and choke them. Crazy stuff can happen in a full-blown deliverance if it's a strong spirit. And so it's why you need to pray with your eyes open. Nobody shuts their eyes. Nobody closes their eyes in a session. If a team member's got their eyes closed, I'm like, open your eyes, <laughs> watch and pray. Because if you got your head down, bowed, and you're closing your eyes, they could, they could attack you. You would never know it. And it's not the person attacking you. It's the spirit. The devil hates us. He hates deliverance, right? And so you have to be wise to that. You should protect your leader too, your team leader. The team should be ready because they're always going to go after, after the leader. They want to take out the head. <laughs> and so you have to remember that, right? Thank God we've learned that through the years. And we don't see much manifestation now because you know why? We have grown in our authority. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so <laughs> we used to work really, really hard in the early years. But what happens is because when you start out and you're growing in revelation and growing your authority, tested. Remember we talked about that last night. You're tested in these things. And so you'll be tested to see what I, there was three things the Holy Spirit gave me. It was you're tested in your authenticity, your authority. And what was the third thing? Anybody remember? Belief system. You're tested in your belief system. Thank you. Your authority and your authenticity. And so that goes on even in the early years of beginning a deliverance ministry. And what he wants to do, the devil, through the testing, he wants you to say, that's too much. It don't take all that. That's too hard. It's true. I remember I got I got flung, and this was years ago, but I got, like, tossed and hit a chair, and I had a big bruise, like, all over my ribs. It hurt. at the mo I didn't feel it at the time because of the adrenaline, you know, and this the whole thing going on. But I had some war marks, you know, Man, yeah, some stuff, but but God kept me. Did I quit? No, I did not quit. It makes you rise up when you're really called to do it, and we're all called to cast out devils, right? It makes you rise up. It makes you really, it strengthens you in your calling if you continue to do it. But if you back down and you quit because it's too much, well, you're going to forfeit what God has for you. And you'll, but, but like I say, today, thank God we don't see much of that ever. Thank the Lord, right? But we had to pay a price to get to, to grow. You understand? Because the kingdom of God, as you, as you use your gifts, you, mat you um, mature in those gifts, no matter what it is, right? They get, they get strong in you. you. You master those things. That's how you do it. But if you don't ever exercise and do it, you know, it's not going to happen. That's why you don't do deliverance by yourself. You need help. You need people watching and people hearing for you and people seeing things. Hallelujah. So I hope that didn't mess anybody up, but you need to do what God has called you to do. And he said, believers will cast out devils. Amen. And so watch out for inappropriate touches. It is best if men pray for men and women for women. And so if you're, if Many times if we do deliverance on a man, I never do that by myself. And I, and I love to pull in George or now we have Pastor Kenneth. We have Elder Larry now. Thank God, you know, I can pull in men, you know, to help and and all of that. And so in the same now, you don't always have that option. But I promise you, you can even if the person is not um, skilled in deliverance, I, I feel in my spirit that they still should be available right? Your lay person or somebody should be available to be a witness while you're praying for somebody. You know, that's, you need to, you need to remember that because the devil's out to discredit you. He's always coming to discredit you. That's what he wants to do. So you have to watch your back. You have to make sure that, 
that you don't give him an opportunity to discredit you. Amen. Or the ministry. And so if the deliverance session is lengthy, take breaks. Be encouraging. Remind the person that God loves them and is at work to free them from Satan's bondage. We, we don't go over three hours. We try and keep it really under that. But a couple hours is usually you can get through it. But three hours after, I mean, pe people get wore out. You wear them out. You're tired and they get wore out too. Now, if, you're, if you have a, a demonic spirit that's up and it ain't going nowhere, it ain't going down, and, it's, and you're in there th three hours, you might have to stay four or five because you don't ever let the person leave in manifestation. If you have to guard the door, hold them down. <laughs> Don't let them leave the building in a full-blown manifestation because the spirit is up. The spirit comes up, and if they're in a rage or if they're, you know, it's self-hate or something, suicide, you know, you don't know. But they could leave the building and, and have a car wreck, right, or hurt themselves. You don't want that. You, you make sure that they are in their right mind, they're in the right mind. And one of the scriptures in, um, when it says that you have them say, this is in John, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and he is the son of God. If a person can't say that after a cleansing's over, because it says test the spirits. No man can say that but by the spirit of God. And that is true. That is so true because we've had people still in manifestations and they could not say Jesus is the son of God who came in the flesh. They could say it. They'd be, they'd be stammering, stuttering, biting their tongue. That means what? A demon's up. That means that a demon is up. And so you don't, you don't let them leave. So that's, you know, we used to do that a lot before we grew in our discernment. We used to do that a lot in the early years because we were growing in the gifts, okay? And we wanted to make sure, because sometimes we weren't sure if the person was in their right mind or not. And it's First John 4, testing the spirits. And we would have them quote that. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. He said, By this you will know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. Or it can be another spirit. And so they need to say that. I have them say Jesus Christ is the son of God who came in the flesh. And so it's, it's scriptural and it works. And so you can write that somewhere and that will help you. Have them quote that before they walk out the door. And if they're looking at you crazy and they can't say it, put them back in the chair. <laughs> Don't let them leave uh, because something's going on. Okay. And so don't believe what a wicked spirit says unless you test it. Well, let's go up. I missed one here. Don't seek information or allow any wicked spirit to volunteer information you do not seek. Sometimes they just talk in, trying to distract you, trying to get you off course, unfocused, uh, all of those things. So your communication with them has only the purpose of breaking their power and commanding them to leave. Other communication borders on what is condemned in scriptures as spiritism. Only seek as directed by Holy Spirit to find out blocks or hindrances. There are times when the Holy Spirit will direct me to ask a demon a question. And most of the, and the question is, how did you get in? Something like that, usually. Or what is your name? Two things. And Jesus, Jesus did that. He asked them what their name was. Did he not? Yes, he did. And, and what happens, sometimes you have to ask two or three times, but only under the leading of God. You don't just do that because you want to know what it is. That's not right. That borders line pride, too. And so remember, because it's not your session, it's the Lord's. Okay? 
And so he'll say that, and you might have to say it more than once. And I want to say that again, because many times we fail in deliverance because we don't ask twice or three times. And we back down. And we have an example where Jesus, even with Legion, he was telling it to come out. And the thing kept talking in the man. Jesus <laughs> was saying that. And another time he, he prayed for somebody and they got a partial healing. Jesus. And he prayed again and they were whole. And so you can ask and you can pray more than once. Doesn't mean you have unbelief. It could be the stubbornness of the demon. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand all that. But I know that many times if I wouldn't have asked, you know, two, three, four times, the people would have still been in bondage. And so I had to keep hammering it. And, you, and you'll notice when you keep asking, what is your name? Tell me in the name of Jesus who you are. You say it, and they're not, they're, the person's like, you know, looking crazy, like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, but you have to keep saying it because God directed you to say it. So the more you say it, you will feel the anointing of God and the authority of God rise up. Don't back down. It will speak. It will speak. And we have seen where... Demons will stir up the flesh or the soul man, I should say. The soul man and the person could be, and they are pretty emotional going through deliverance anyway. And their their soul can be stirred up and it, it will cause the deliverance person to back down and to stop the session. Don't do that, okay? They've signed up for it. They went through the process and they're in the chair. And so they'll, they might be, you know, crying a little bit or, you know, I feel kind of funny or I feel afraid. Yeah, you do because fear is coming out, right? And so you pursue past the soul stuff because you're going after the spirit, right? And so you have to be careful of that. But very rarely do I ever have to speak to them. And I don't want to talk to them anyway. See, I don't want to know anything. I don't want to talk to them if God didn't reveal it to me then I don't need to know it. So don't believe what a wicked spirit says unless you test it. They are liars. Satan is who? The father of lies. That's where the distractions come in. They're, they're going to lie to you, right? They're going to, they're going to, they also, they will challenge you. They will speak and challenge who you are. So you have to stand in who you are. Command their information. Uh, command where their information is received. Will that answer stand as truth before the throne of the true living God? And when you say these kind of things to them, you say in Jesus name. It's not in your name or your authority. Always put it back. It's in Jesus name. That's why you're, you know, are you speaking the truth that Jesus, you know, that Jesus will speak? Is this truth? Don't be afraid of their threatening of harm to you or your family. It is good to use John First John five eighteen. He that is begotten of God keeps himself, and the wicked one touches him not. They will often threaten to kill you or destroy your loved ones. Your protection is in the Lord, and they cannot hurt us when our Lord is shielding us. And that's why we always cover our families, persons, properties, possessions in the blood of Jesus before deliverance. Release the angels. You have the angels of God. They're there working with you. Don't assume that the victory is the end of the warfare. Those afflicted with deep struggles with darkness find it necessary to maintain a close walk with the Lord Jesus. If one hierarchical has the power broken against you, another that has no direct relation to a former may manifest itself. And so what it's saying is that is that people have multiple strongholds. Okay, there's multiple strongholds in people. And so that's why we teach people in cleansing that there is a nest connected to each stronghold. And you learn that in cleansing and that's in your book, but there's a nest of them. Like fear has many faces. Fear has many assignments. And so you don't just deal with one spirit. It would be nice if it was that easy, but it's not that simple. If you're doing a cleansing. If you want people to really to go deep and you want to get it all out, if you want to pick fruit, you can do that. And that gives a temporal relief when you pick fruit on the tree. George, can you hand out those papers, please? 
when you pick the fruit, that's one thing, but you want to deal with the root. And so there's a few papers I'm just going to hand out and give to you. And I need one too. Um, it's a, it's an old book that was wrote rejection, its fruits and its roots. It's referenced in the blue books with the tree and the root system. And you can't get any more online unless you want to spend about a thousand dollars. It's crazy, but his son quit printing them. The man went on to be with the Lord and he quit printing them. And so now they're just, you can't find them. And if you do find them, it's ridiculous. So I printed a few pages off about bondage because on one of these, um, there's this tree. I think it's a back sheet here. And so you'll see, and I did the bondage one because someone asked about an octopus spirit, and which is a spirit of bondage. And then we'll go back into this. But I want you to see the tree here, the rejection you have. Uh, peers, you know, um, you might have to use a magnifying glass to see it, <laughs> but hey, you know, you got it, right? Yeah, we got the big tree in the office, but you can look, I'll, I'll pull it out afterwards, you can look at it, and take pictures of it, you know? Um, society, culture, peers, and family, then you have fear and pride, so you see fear uh, would be the inward manifestation that someone is rejected and broken. And then out, and out of that comes all of those branches. So when you hear me say pick the fruit, people pick the fruit like even isolation or something on the tree. You know, that's a fruit, but it's deeper in the person. A person has fear. The person has all these other things going on, the fear of rejection, self-rejection, and rejection. So that's why the mapping is so important because you will see the areas where they have this demon of rejection, which is a root, um, a fueler of the tree, the evil tree that grows in our life. Because Jesus says, you know, tree by its fruit. So you have fear and then you have pride is outward. And so when you see someone full of pride, they're still broken person in there. They're still full of rejection, you know, whatever reason. So pastor put this tree on a, she's going to put it back there for later, but she put it on a board. But you can take pictures of that or you get a little bigger picture. But, um, and you can use that. It's a good tool. It's a great tool, especially as people are coming in for deliverance that maybe have never experienced deliverance and they don't understand. And so they can see the inward manifestation is fear. The outward is pride. And so somewhere there is a fear of rejection in the hearts of the people. Amen. Thank God for cleansing. So you're uprooting those demons. That's your stronghold. And they will threaten you, but you don't back down, right? We know they're a liar. So don't assume that one victory is the end. I said that. Do not do take back all ground you may have given Satan by careless, willful sins of the flesh. A simple prayer of faith accomplishes this example. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I take back from Satan the ground that I gave him when I lied to my boss. I confess this as a sin against my Lord, and I ask for your cleansing through the blood of Jesus. This should also be a practice suggested to anyone you are called upon to help. One of the biggest tools that you will find in all the books, I think I put the prayers in back, all of them, the cleansing prayers. People wrestle and wrestle and wrestle with demons if they do not do the prayers up front. Even if someone comes to, to church service on a Sunday and needs deliverance, they're still going to repent for sin. They're still going to forgive and release people. I don't even, most of the time, especially directed by the Holy Spirit, I won't even pray healing prayers unless I ask him, do you have any unforgiveness toward anyone or yourself? Because I want the healing to flow easy. And, and sometimes they'll be, they'll start crying and manifesting right there because they do. They're full of bitterness and they're sick in their body. And so you have to get them. So they're going to get, they're going to get some deliverance from unforgiveness, which is the number one blocker. Right. Unbelief and then unforgiveness. So they're going to get uh, released from that forgiveness and then they can get healing. 
You see that? So that's why we rest on people don't get healed because they harbor all this bitterness in their heart. And so did you take your, remember we said, you don't have to get in a hurry. Take your time and talk to them. If needed, you may remind spirits that you are seated with Christ far above all principalities and powers, that you have full authority over them. They hate to hear this because it weakens their hold. Many times a, sub, a stubborn spirit keep using those authority spirits right in the ear. Keep saying it. That thing gets so weak, it just gets like a, you know, just a, a limp dish rag, whatever. I mean, it just, it, but it'll be strong until you keep using the word. <laughs> They hate it when you use the word of God and it has to come out, right? And so you could be kept saying, you know, loose, loose in the name of Jesus, loose and nothing's happening. Use authority scriptures, you know, and they're in, they're in this book for you. Galatians 3.13, they don't like that one, that Jesus redeemed people from the curse. They don't like that scripture. They start threatening you and you can say, you know, uh, that the Lord, it says in Luke, you know, that Jesus gave us authority over serpents and scorpions, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm me. So they have to be quiet. You keep saying that. And so uh, send the evicted spirits to dry places, never to return to the body again in Jesus' name. People sometimes say, don't you send them to the abyss? No, I just say dry places because that's what the Bible says. They roam around in dry places. Um, so that's my conviction. That's how I do it. And I figure the Lord will put them where he wants them. At times, a spirit will try to hurt the person in, that you are working with in some manner. Sudden body aches, pain, severe headaches, choking experience are often used. Command the spirit, naming the symptom to release this hold immediately in the name of Jesus. If we would have stopped through deliverance with mock heart attacks and all kinds of things, you know, people wouldn't have got free. We had to press past people's physical uh, manifestations in their body because those demons will cause and create lying symptoms in order to stay in there but when the people get delivered all the symptoms go okay and then it helps when you have people that are nurses on your team and all of that people you know will try and tell you i can't breathe i can't breathe they're they're calling out a spirit of panic of course they can't because they're they're in manifestation and the panic is coming out of them right so you don't stop and let them stay in a full-blown panic panic manifestation you know then who knows what can happen so you so demons will manifest as they leave many times so you will see that Sometimes you're calling out anger and, and people, their fists are just start curling. They, they don't even know why it's doing that, but they used to be a fighter, you know, and so their fists will just start curling, but it's coming out. And so that's what you have to know. If you see a manifestation, it's because it's leaving. <laughs> Praise the Lord, right? Because <clears throat> they'll manifest their nature sometimes as they're coming out. Too many people commanding spirits, different ones at the same time, causes confusion for everyone, especially the person being ministered to. Even in deliverance, there is decency and order, especially in deliverance. Especially. Years ago, we had a, a, a pastor that met well, but he uh, had just moved back to the Bowling Green area, and there was a young man that was in his flock, and he wanted... He was inviting all his friends from everywhere just to come in and, and do deliverance on this young man because he was uh, having a lot of issues with occult things, trying to kill him. So he had been in some things, and I had never met the young man, but he'd been in some things and in prison and different um, open doors, right? And so this pastor didn't know about anything about open doors. He didn't know about cleansing. He just knew the old school deliverance. And so he was going to bring him in. And I'm not against that because, you know, people got free, right? But there's a better way. <laughs> and so he brought him in and he he said he was going to bring him in and put him in the circle. And then he was just going to call his friends just to come and just, you know, try and get this stuff off this boy or out of this young man. And I knew what that would be like. And so I just asked him, I said, can you just give me two weeks? If he'll, if he'll just talk to me and just let me counsel him for a couple weeks and, and minister to him. And I said, I feel like I can help him. And I felt the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so he did. He, he backed off and let, because he really wanted this, this young man free. And so he got, he got his freedom. 
And so we, I mapped him out, found out what he was dealing with, found out that things were, you know, coming off his wall and, and stabbing him, pictures and things flying through his house. We know that's a bunch of occult witchcraft. That's like high-level stuff there. When things are manifesting in people's house, things are moving around, that's higher level of occult power. So he had gotten involved in some things and he had all kinds of bitterness and self-hatred and all kinds of issues going on and mental strongholds. So God, God freed him, but it wasn't, it wasn't that, it wasn't the way the man wanted to do it. So thank God for, for decency and in order, right? And so see how God grows, how, how much revelation is released through history, <laughs> through trial and error. Thank God for the pioneers that did deliverance, right? Thank God for them because <laughs> so they paved the way for us to come in, you know, just to make it uh, easier and better. And so doing those prayers, and this, this man had to read all those prayers out loud, all the renouncing, all of that stuff. And then it was very easy to get him free. And so they wouldn't have done one prayer. They wouldn't have counseled him. They wouldn't have mapped him. They would have wrestled and struggled for who knows how long. And the boy would have been defeated. Because people get defeated when they can't get free. You know, they feel like they just feel defeated. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. So if a person falls into a fetal position in deep agony, there is usually a need of deep inner healing. Trauma is in place and needs to be evicted. And so with trauma in your book, you know, you got all those spirit images, all those things that need to come out and be evicted in them. But I do find that if people are curled up real, real tight ball and screaming and crying and they got some abuse in there, they got some deep pain and you must continue to call out all that pain because the Lord knows what it is and he can go in and clean that out. And you'll find behind all of that, there's demons that's causing the pain. Amen. And then God heals their soul. You don't have to scream and shout at them. They're not deaf. Even a spirit of deafness is not deaf. <laughs> Shouting at them does not give you more authority. It only uses strength that could be better spent <laughs> in another way. Amen. Yeah. Is this helping? Okay. As you minister, Satan may attack you with fear. Very true. You got to affirm that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So you quote these scriptures and you begin to use the word of God. The delivered must fall out of agreement with demons. That's why these prayers are so important. When they do the prayers, they're coming out of agreement with darkness. They're coming out of agreement with generational iniquities and their ancestors' idolatry. So that breaks the legal right for that demon to be there when they repent and renounce those things. Very important. That makes for an easy cleansing. Counsel the person on what he should do after deliverance. Pastor Bertha covered that. And then all that's in the book. You can use all of those things. The church is not a supermarket where people can come in for a quick pickup. Hello, right? Some people want demons out, but they don't want Jesus in. You can do more damage getting a demon out if people don't want to walk with the Lord. Because the Bible says that seven more come back in. So if they're not ready to get out of their idolatry and they don't want to cleanse their house and get their um, ancestors' idols out of their bedroom, just let them keep their demons. That sounds harsh, but, but you don't want them to get more, right? And it's very true. And some of you that know what I'm talking about when you've worked in different, uh, and it doesn't matter because every culture, they could have a Buddha. They could have a Buddha in their living room. You know, they could they could have all kinds of secret sins that they want to hang on to, but they want to get rid of this uh, tormenting spirit. They have nightmares, but they won't do a house cleaning. Why do they have nightmares? What's the open door to the nightmares? What have they brought into their home? And all of that's in the book, too. They got to do a house cleaning and the Holy Spirit will speak to you and he'll tell you what they need to get rid of. And if they tell you, well, I can't get rid of that, that costs me too much money. OK, well, I can't pray for you then. I'm not going to pray for you. I love you, but I can't pray for you because I'm responsible. I'm accountable. And if and if you leave here and you go back into sin, you know, you are going to get more bondage. Now, if they're struggling and they were honest and they tell you, 
you know, I'm really struggling with this sin behavior and I'm struggling with getting rid of this, you know, counsel them. But if they have a desire, so you got to hear me by the spirit, if they have a desire to get the idol out of their house, but they don't feel they're strong enough, go in. Because when you break the, when they renounce it and they repent and you break the power of that thing, they will have the strength after deliverance. Amen. So you see the balance there. It's, it's what? It's the attitude of the heart. I feel the Holy Spirit so strong on that. Because sometimes we will give up on people. But if they out of their mouth, the Bible says you confess with your mouth. <laughs> if they can confess with their mouth, hey, I want free in this area, but I don't know if I can do it. You know, I, I want free of this, but I just don't know. Well, just renounce it. If you really want to be free, you renounce, you repent, the Lord will do the rest. But if but if they come with a different way, I'm not I'm not getting rid of that. And, you know, I uh -uh, that cost too much money. And that was my grandmother's. And we've seen that, y'all. We've seen all of these kind of things. Then you then you, you know, if the Holy Spirit says don't pursue, you don't pursue. Remember, he's he's going to tell you sometimes to back off. And if you've been here and you've done deliverance, you know, there are times when the Lord says enough <laughs> back off. You know, because even Jesus, you know, there's stories of Jesus in there. So the rich man, you know, the rich young ruler, there was people Jesus did not pursue. He sure didn't because they weren't ready to give up their stuff. They weren't ready to walk with him. He didn't beg them. He didn't chase after them, did he? Uh-uh. He was led to do the things that he did, and so should we be led. Hallelujah. You guys are doing good. Let me check. Okay. 20 minutes. So I think about the counseling. Um, oh, this is a good one on 22. Sometimes it helps to have the person speak out loud the thoughts they're going through their mind, even if it's swearing or profanity. <laughs> Once exposed in that fashion, the demons can be commanded to leave. Some deliverance ministries claim that it glorifies Satan to allow demons to speak. Others feel that demons are liars anyway. Regardless, I find it necessary in a fair number of cases to ask questions when led by Holy Spirit. Many times we will say to people, what are you hearing? And they'll tell you, I, I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm, I said, no, tell us. It's okay. What are you hearing? It doesn't mean it's you. What are you hearing? And they'll say, that thing, is, there's something telling me to curse you. There's something telling me to run out the room. There's something, or there may see a vision or an image of someone. Those are all keys or clues to what is going on in their soul, right? Because the anointing on you, which is God, is bringing things up, recalling things to remembrance, right? And he's revealing secrets of men's hearts. Why? So they can get free. Yeah, so it's okay to ask questions. Ask the person in the chair the questions that you feel led to ask. And that'll show you why they're blocked up sometimes. You know, especially unforgiveness. Well, I'm, I'm you know, you're, you've been sitting there trying to get these people free. You know, and the Holy Spirit will direct you, ask them what they're seeing. You know, and you're having this conversation. They'll say, well, I'm seeing my, my grandmother. Well, tell me about her. Oh, I hated my grandmother. My grandmother hurt me. <laughs> Hello. What does that tell you? That tells you that she has unforgiveness toward her grandmother. And she needs to forgive her grandmother. Mm -hmm. And you probably need to investigate that a few minutes. Find out the why the grandma, why all that stuff's in her spirit. Because the Lord is revealing to you the cause of her bondage. You see that? Communication. It's very, very important. The old school way, we never let nobody talk or do nothing. Pinned them down, screamed at them, and hoped they got free. We don't do that anymore. Hallelujah. Mercy. <laughs> so, praise God. All right, and you can see I did a whole big thing here in Mark, but 
Um, let's go down to 23. Don't try to cast out every possible demon or try to cover too much territory in one session. Keep sessions under two hours if possible. Two to three is enough. God's chosen people took the land God had given them little by little. And that's Deuteronomy. You can find that Deuteronomy chapter seven. Very good scripture for deliverance. Write that down if you if you don't know that. Deuteronomy 7, I think it starts around verse 20, that chapter when they were going in to possess the land prophetically, God's telling us, tells us that in deliverance, little by little, as much as they were able to hold on to at a time, (laughs) because they can't handle all of it, right? So they'll get a good session. Deuteronomy 7, I'm going to read it to you and go back in so we can get it here. So you need to understand, you you did not, um, that soul belongs to the Lord. He knows how much, he knows how much they can handle. And you never let a counselee conduct their own deliverance. Man, that happens too. People tell you, this is what I got going on, this is what it's going to take, and this, 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 really? And, the, and then you're working with them and they stop and they tell you, no, that ain't in there. Stuff like that. No, they came to you for deliverance. So Deuteronomy 7, it says, um, let's go to 20. Moreover, he said, the Lord your God will send the hornet against them until those who are left and hide themselves from you perish. Believe it or not, and I know you'll believe it, but that is a that hornet right there is really a spiritual weapon in deliverance there has been times when the lord not all the time but there are times sometimes the lord will say release the hornet it's in the bible right and people you know i know it's but i'm telling you you can read the bible and you can see all kinds of weapons in there So I really do believe that is a weapon of deliverance. And I have said that father released the hornets in the name of Jesus because it was a stubborn spirit and it would not come out. And we've had the spirit say that hurts. Then they'll say it stings for real. It's a spiritual weapon that you can use if led by the Holy Spirit. The Lord your God will send the hornet against them. Remember, it's not stinging the person. It's the demons. Those who are left and hide themselves from you perish. You shall not dread them, for the Lord your God is in your midst. A great and awesome God. The Lord your God will clear away these nations before you little by little. You will not be able to put an end to them quickly, for the wild beasts would grow too numerous for you. What's he talking about wild bees? He talking about uh, animals? No, it's a spiritual here. He said, but the Lord your God will deliver them before you and will throw them into great confusion until they are destroyed. He will deliver their kings into your hands so that you will make their name perish from under heaven. No man will be able to stand before you until you have destroyed them. Now, here we talked a while ago about idolatry. The graven images of their gods you are to burn with fire. You shall not covet the silver or the gold that is in them, nor take it for yourselves, or you will be snared by it. For it is an abomination to the Lord your God. That snare means it will trap you again. That's why you got to clean your house. They got to get rid of their, their gods. He said, you shall not bring an abomination into your house and and like it come under the ban. You shall utterly detest it and you shall utterly abhor it for it is something banned. It's illegal to God. He doesn't want that in there. And so that is very true. I have used the hornets. I've had to use the hornets and they work. I don't know anything about them except it's in the Bible and it's a spiritual weapon. (laughs) Okay. See what they look like. Well, probably a a bee, a stinger. I don't know, a hornet. (laughs) And maybe maybe it's a group of angels. I don't know. You know, we don't have to know everything, but we know when the Holy Spirit speaks and it's in the Bible that we can use it. All right. Um, Inform the counselee on the top of 24. 
from the start that deliverance will take as many sessions needed with ongoing deliverance thereafter as required until they become overcomers and have victory in the areas of bondage. That's how you know people is free because there's fruits of righteousness, right? So you don't wear people out. The next one, don't become a permanent crutch. Teach self-deliverance. Teach them how to war for themselves. Don't just be at every beck and call as you walk with them a while. First you do, but after a while, they got to they gotta learn some self-deliverance and they got to learn some discipline, right? So don't take the place of Holy Spirit in a counselee's life, especially if they want to lean on you. You don't seek to hear him enough. And so, and there's scriptures for that. Don't reveal confident, uh, confidential information. We know that. Be careful about physical contact. We know that. This is kind of funny, but true. Be careful of your own personal hygiene. Don't be sloppy in appearance. Body odor, bad breath. Distractions. This can be a distraction. Also, the one who ministers should have a professional attitude and posture. That's why we like to be in uniform when we do that stuff. Because it, it shows order, it shows unity, all of those things. You don't minister if you're too tired. Be rested and filled with Holy Spirit's peace and joy. Right? Beware of the Messiah complex. God can and will get his work done without you. <laughs> he wants your obedience, not sacrifices. So... You got to make sure you have rest because if you're tired in your physical body, you will not be on point. You will be laxy. You can miss things. Your your spirit, soul, and body, believe it or not, it is connected. And the, and the body can pull on you. Your body can pull on you when it's not in shape, when it's hurting, when it when you're sick. You know, all of those things. And you're, you know, something's going on. I know we don't get sick. I just said that we don't get sick. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> if you get a lying symptom. <laughs> so, but it's true. If you don't feel, if you don't feel strong and rested and, you know, you have, you got to have all your soul in order. You got to make sure you don't have unforgiveness. You got to make sure that, you know, you're not coming in tired with an attitude. You got an attitude. If someone in the team comes in with the attitude, they ain't helping. I don't let them help. I tell you, and that's why we had a rule that we did that was very effective, and we still tell people, but you should have an hour, your team, when you know you're going into a session, or, you know, you should have at least an hour of just worship and meditating and seeking the Lord for yourself, you know, just, just worship and, you know, honoring God and preparing yourself to serve, because deliverance is serving, you're serving the people, right? And so, at the end of sessions, after calling spirits out and sending them to dry places, fill the person with Holy Spirit and seal them with the Spirit of God and the blood of Jesus. Command the doors of the past to be shut. The spiritual doors are now shut. We fill them with the Holy Spirit. Father, I just fill them with the Holy Spirit right now, fresh and filling. And I usually say, you know, I fill them with your love, your joy, your peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. And, you know, I cover their deliverance in the blood. I mean, there's and there's prayers in the blue book about that. But it's very important. Shut the doors of the past. Uh, you want them filled with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes they'll come to you and they have never spoken tongues. You need to You need to do your best to fill them and make sure they get their prayer language before they leave. And usually it's rather easy after deliverance because they're cleaned out. And so also be open to use all nine gifts of the Spirit as led by Holy Spirit. We don't just cast the spirits out and break curses, but guess what? We're imparting to them. That's what I love about the cleansing is that, you know, it's not just about the deliverance part. And so people, you minister in inner healing. You, you allow the Holy Spirit to use you. You minister inner healing. You're ministering deliverance. It's the Jeremiah 110, but now you're building them up. You're planting something in them. You activate gifts. You're prophesying. It's awesome. So, you know, healing bodies, you know, it's, it's everything, not just deliverance. 
And so you want all the, you want the gifts of the spirit so you can use your team. Your team can have gifts, you know, and let them back up. Let them prophesy to them, you know, let them minister healing to them. Let them do those things too. You might have been the one that, you know, cast out all the devils. Well, let them step in and do something. You see what I mean? God loves that because that's what he created in the Acts Church was team ministry. Amen. Like Pastor said, everybody wins. <laughs> Hallelujah. Any questions on any of those things? I know it was a long one, but any questions on that? It's almost lunchtime. Not quite yet. Almost. <laughs> Nope, no questions. Okay. All right. So on page 38, this kind of flows with that. I'm not going to give you all of them, but I am going to say that we must minister personal ministry team guidelines. So you must minister at all times with character and integrity. You know, and I want to say that because if you've got somebody on a team that's immature, you're going to have to check that. Okay, if they're immature and they, they come in, you know, thinking it's a big joke or they're giggling, laughing, you don't want that in there. So you have to check your team. You got to check because you, you, it doesn't mean you cancel them out and fire them. <laughs> it means that that's a good time to, to, you know, to use for growing, growing them up, you know, and if they do something in a session that, you know, they shouldn't have done, you know, you can give them the leadership look <laughs> or you, you know, and hopefully they see it or you might have to say, excuse me, can you come, can you come out for a minute? You know, you don't want to rebuke them or anything in front of the person in the, that's getting ministry, right? These things are real. you got to do these kind of things if you want to run a deliverance team. You have to, you know, and you don't want to wound your help. But they need to know that this is, this. you have to have utmost character and integrity. This is, this is very serious to do these things. It's not, this is not for fun. This is, this is labor for the Lord. And so don't be afraid to do that. You correct in love. So you must at all times minister with compassion, love, and kindness. If you see that someone is losing their compassion and becoming a robot, they need to get a fresh dip of compassion. If they just become robotic and they don't care about the person, that's not good either. Okay, so, and that takes work, doesn't it? For all of us, not to lose that. We talked about that last night. Observe others' anointings. And you can see this here. This is how a team should function. Love one another. Edify one another. Be devoted to one another. Admonish one another. Receive one another. Care for one another. Be like-minded. Greet one another. Provoke one another to love and good works forev uh, forever. Forever one another. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. That's an error. Sorry about that. Be kind to one another. Forgive one another. Comfort one another. Exhort one another. Consider one another, pray for one another, confess your faults one to another, use hospitality one to another, minister to one another, have fellowship with one another. That's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> it can be done. It can be done. You want your team to be tight and connected? They need to pray together. Must if, 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 if my teammates won't pray with me, then they don't need to serve with me, Right? You must pray together because I'm telling you, that's the Holy Spirit glue that will cause you to always flow as one. And so it's a sacrifice and it, they must do that. Maintain confidence at all times. So we're going to pause right there because it's, it's a lot. But I really want you to read through these, okay? Read through this book because it's really going to help for you to build a team. No team is perfect because we are imperfect people, but there are those that are called to do this kind of work in the kingdom of God. And these are just some guidelines that will help you develop a strong, healthy team.
that's what you want. And so, you know, you don't use a novice. A team member should be should always be an intercessor. If they want to begin to work in deliverance ministries, if they're not an intercessor in your church, they don't need to be on a deliverance team. All of our teams were intercessors. Every single one of them that work on a team have a prayer a prayer life ministry prayer ministry amen because they say well i'm not an intercessor i don't you know i don't like to pray well then you don't need to work in deliverance amen thank you jesus so father we just thank you for what is released and we will continue father after lunch so father i said you would just bless them and bless the food father god even as we transition we just give you glory father we thank you for the wisdom that you are releasing continue holy spirit to speak to us in a deep way today and we give you the glory for it in jesus name amen